Welcome, my friends, to the Bob and Brad podcast, produced by Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. I am Bob, and I'm exactly one half of the Bob and Brad team. And today, I, my return guest is Cynthia. She's a physician's assistant with Summon, Summit Orthopedics, uh, where a place up in the Twin Cities, actually, they have multiple locations in Minneapolis and St. Paul. And today we're going to talk about, well, we got three subjects where we're really going to talk about. And one is whiplash. The second is cervicogenic headaches, which is neck headaches. And the third is just, you know, regular all overall neck pain. And uh, hopefully we can get you some solutions if you have any one of those three. So join us for, for the program. Welcome back to the program, Cynthia PAC, who was last time coupled up with Dr. Ekstrom, but this time she's going solo. Thanks Flying for, solo. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for taking the time and uh, being with us. So how does a cervicogenic headache present itself? So I think cervicogenic headaches or cervicogenic migraines or neck headache, yeah, whatever you want to call them, I think they are so interesting because there is such a crossover between these type of, of headaches and migraine headaches. Um, so usually how they present themselves is there's some type of degree of, of neck pain. So cervical, meaning the cervical spine, um, something, something going on in the neck and, you know, whether it, someone perceives it as a deep neck pain, someone perceives it as a, a muscular tension, it's all going to vary on the person. A lot of the times we'll see headaches that will kind of sit in this occipital region. So the base of the head mm -hmm. and sometimes, you know, behind the ear or behind the eye for a lot of people, um, or the jaw kind of in a, a trigeminal nerve pattern. Often one-sided or. So it can both. be, it can be both. Yep. And, and that's where that kind of blurry line between migraines and cervicogenic headaches come in because migraines were always thought of unilateral one-sided, um, but migraines can also present as both and cervicogenic headaches can be one-sided or both. Sure. In fact, I think they called it like Ram's horns. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't, I can just imagine you should get a tattoo. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> like a Mike Tyson type thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> but so um, these headaches, anything else that accompanies them? I mean, do, do you get the aura? Do you get um, I mean, nauseated? Do you get, you know, what, what are some other things you might see along with these headaches? So cervicogenic headaches in general or in most studies say that there's not really an, an aura that accompanies them. However, some of the other kind of migraine features definitely can pop up in these cervicogenic headaches. So um, nausea, vomiting, photophobia and phonophobia. So sensitivity to light, sensitivity really? to sound. You'll, a lot of these people, you know, and I, I, I suffer from headaches too. So a lot of these people are in the bed, lights off, um, you know, hoodie on covering their ears because everything is just hyper sensitive. Gotcha. So, um, yes, I had Steve August. He's a, a therapist from Australia, or New Zealand. Uh, and he was talking about the same headaches. And he was saying they, you know, injected the joints with a chemical that would uh, irritate the joint, basically. And oh, like a pro, like a prolo therapy. Yeah. Almost. Well, it was a, it, they wanted it for uh, research. They wanted to see what, oh, what, okay. crea what created the pain. So okay. They, and, and it did create that pain going around. I always thought it was the greater occipital nerve. Um, I don't know what the thoughts are on that now, but he seems to think just, just the joint itself can send pain all the way around like that. Yeah. So th there's kind of an interesting connection between the, the neck and the medial branches we were talking about at that sit at those joints and their connection between the greater occipital nerve. So the third, the third occipital nerve is, is a kind of a 
superficial medial branch of the, the C2 nerve. And so that radiates up the back of the head, um, kind of medial to that greater occipital nerve. But the greater occipital nerve also comes off branches of, of the, the C2 and you know some innervation from the C3. So they are all very interconnected. And so sometimes aggravating those joints or even isolating those joints can take care of that same type of pain because of the connections that those nerves have. Well, why don't we talk about that? What do you think some of the main causes are of cervicogenic headaches? So um, going back to kind of the first thing we were talking about, whiplash. Whiplash is definitely a sure. big contributor to cervicogenic headaches. Um, posturing. So sometimes cervicogenic headaches, there might not be a structure or finding in the cervical spine, like a disc herniation or arthritis. And it might just be muscular posturing, poor posture, yeah. um, kind of tugging. I, I, I tell people a lot of times, sort of your, your head and your neck are playing a, a tug of war and it's locally irritating some of these nerves, like the greater occipital nerve, um, the suboccipital nerve. And so those can get irritated too and, and cause, uh, but other things like, uh, disc herniations, you know, underlying pathology that can short, sort of trigger this cascade of, of issues up and to the muscles too, um, can cause these headaches. I mean, have you seen, I mean, overall, well, you've been three years. I don't know if that's a good uh, period of time to judge this, but I mean, have you seen a, a drastic increase in these type of cases? Because this therapist had, he had yeah. like, it, it was, you know, a tsunami is what he called it. <laughs> I, um, I actually feel that kind of since the COVID pandemic started, and a lot of people have been working from home. Their, their setup is much different than it's been at work and the ergonomics are different. And uh -huh. so I've seen a lot of, a lot more people present with an onset of these headaches over the past couple of years with no, you know, no trauma, no injury, just a change in their, their ergonomics. And, um, we're not going out as much. We're on our phones a lot more. And so not you know, that as much. is, yep. Stressors, yeah. you know, every, this has been stressful right. for, for many people. So I've seen an uptick, I guess, in, in that sense. Um, Makes total since, sense. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think uh, people don't realize, um, well, one thing you just, when you're working at home, you don't have the distractions of, co-workers but which right. is good because you get uh, out of movement but i think people are shocked at at how much pain you can have from just poor posture mm -hmm. it's just shocking what what you know they're like something must be really wrong i for, yeah well and i know so many people have had those mornings even when they they've slept wrong and they wake up and they're like i can't move my neck something right. you no know, i gotta go to the er which you know, I'm not blaming anyone. A lot of the times, you know, it's scary to, to not be able to move your neck, yes, but yes. yeah, posture can, can play a big role, especially if it's not, you know, corrected early. And you probably seen that a lot from a therapy standpoint, it's right. like pulling teeth if it's a chronic. And it gets to the point where it's very hard to correct. I mean, mm -hmm. So, um, well, why don't we talk about some of the treatments again? I know that you're going to have different types of patients and a whole span from, um, less serious to more complicated, but what are some of the treatments you might try for somebody with a uh, cervicogenic headaches? Yeah. So from a, you know, from a medication standpoint, sometimes there's different medications we can um, use other than, than over-the-counter medications. Some of the issues too, you know, going with migraine and cervicogenic headaches is overuse in, in some of these medications. So someone oh. that's taking Excedrin twice a day for, for weeks um, can actually cause kind of a cascade of, of more headaches. So really? We try to kind of sparingly 
use medications, but a, a lot of the times there are different medications, different muscle relaxers, some antidepressants and, and things that can be helpful in preventing some of these headaches if they're, if they're chronic and even almost daily. Um, therapy, we rely on therapy heavily to do um, a lot of posturing, repositioning, uh, retraining muscles, working on that trigger point, like I was talking about the, that myofascial release. So trying to get rid of those maybe muscle knots for people that are referring pain to the head or, or the shoulder blade. Um, dry needling is a technique, you know, that, that therapy can use that has been beneficial. And we can add to that by doing trigger point injections, which is it's similar to dry needling in a sense that what, what we're trying to do is mechanically kind of get into that muscle knot, um, break it up. And we do use a little bit of an anesthetic to, to help with kind of that pain relief as well. And then going a little more further into, I guess, you know, from conservative to, to less conservative would yes. be doing occipital nerve blocks. And that's if, if we think the headaches are, are really coming kind of from a local irritation of those occipital nerves, um, that will use a little bit of anesthetic and some steroid and place it, you know, where that greater and lesser occipital nerve run to kind of decrease the irritation that that nerve is causing. Um, and then sometimes Botox treatment we can use for cervicogenic, what I would categorize as, as cervicogenic migraine. Um, we would use Botox treatment. How long do those last, uh, Botox? So Botox is done every three months. Um, and so the there's been studies on you know, having people do Botox for a couple of years and then kind of weaning them down. And I think most of the studies I've seen show that it's just better to, to keep the treatment going every three months. There hasn't been any really efficacy to show of, of stopping it. Um, but every, every three months, so it usually lasts three months and then, and then we repeat it. I see. And in the case where you do, do the anesthetic and steroid, that's kind of a, what, 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 how often could you do that? So if we're using an anesthetic only, so sometimes we can do that in, in nerve blocks or trigger point injections, just an anesthetic. I mean, we could really repeat it every month or so. Um, if there is a steroid, we limit that to usually four times a year, every three months. Um, if you're injecting steroid into that same area. But you're not in these cases, you're not trying to kill the nerve. Correct. Right, correct. No, nope, we're letting, we're letting it live, <laughs> but we're trying to kind of dampen the response that it's giving or, or the pain signals that it's giving off. I take it the therapist also uh, goes at uh, the approach to therapy ergonomically, try to look at their, hopefully look at their setup and their desk and their, yep. try to, and trying to correct the posture. So, and we do, we've done even recently, you know, again, with the pandemic, we've, we've done a lot of um, work notes for people about getting a sit to stand desk about getting, you know, uh, a proper chair and things that their work might per provide to make their home set up a little more ergonomic for them. Sure. And, and that falls in the lifestyle changes. Uh, are there any yep. others that you might make? Um, so lifestyle changes of what, and it's, it's so hard to say this because I know none of us do this, but avoiding stressors, um, finding some type of outlet. So, so exercise and eating healthy, all the things that we all know we should be doing, but right. don't necessarily do. So um, it, with migraines and cervicogenic headaches, I mean, there's kind of an overlap in some triggers. So lack of sleep, again, poor posture, um, sometimes, you know, intake of, of too much sodium, sugar, all of that can definitely lead to an increase in some of these headaches. 
Oh, interesting. Do you uh, do you have a nutritionist nutritionist on staff or or not? We don't. I would I would love to. I guess it's not up to me. I don't sure. I don't own Summit, um, but we don't. There are definitely, uh, especially in the Maple Grove area here, there's a couple of chiropractic clinics that have a nutritionist on staff. I know a lot of grocery stores nowadays will have right, a dietitian right. or a nutritionist, um, which is, is really helpful. Um, very feasible kind of access to, to a nutritionist. Um, so that can be, be helpful too. Yeah. In fact, uh, the girl we have on our program quite often, she used to work for hy V the grocery store. Oh yeah. Yep. And so, yeah, she loves nutrition, but she's also a fitness instructor. So well, uh, anything else that you want to talk about as far as um, cervicogenic headaches uh, or anything else you want to convey to people or? I guess that just that people know there's, there's a lot of options out there options, to treat yes. headaches. There's a lot of causes. We don't necessarily treat migraines in the, in the absence of some type of neck pathology, whether it's just a muscle pathology or a disc or, or joint pathology, migraine headaches without any of those would go to neurology for further workup. But there's an extensive amount of overlap between types of headaches. And there's, there's a lot of options for treatment. So don't give up. Very good. There's again, there's always hope. There's always oh, hope. Oh. That that should be your new your new My slogan. My new tagline, yes. New tag. There's always hope. There's always hope. Yeah, and upon that excellent advice, I think we'll call it to an end. Bring it to an end here. I really appreciate you coming by again, Cynthia, and <laughs> and hopefully we'll see you maybe and Doctor Extra again soon. And yeah. So. Yeah, we we appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks for taking the time. <laughs>